but I don't see you. What is that means? That means I don't see your body. See that? So, Shravan means simply, I am aware. I am aware what knowledge the thought contains. So then I realize it is a matter of communication done. But second problem comes. I don't see you means the mind keeps the idea that you are different from me. So that is second level of our illusion. So now we tell the mind, okay, you say that you are the body and uh, he is the body, yes. What is behind the body? It is made up of the same matter. The original matter is the same. Proportion is different. So the mind asks the question, are we both one? So here the second level of the challenge comes. So now we are not going in that direction that the matter is the same. We hold the mind there and we ask the mind from where this duality comes. Mind, how come you divide and perceive? How come you divide and perceive? We ask this question to the mind. And then what we realize, because this mind cannot see anything without dividing. That is the biggest effect of the mind. Our master says, this defect cannot help the mind to know what is real self. That is why we have to transcend the mind. That is why we have to transcend the mind. So this is another direction. Huh? So you see that how the different yogas have been huh, discovered. So we leave both the direction. I said, hold on. So now we say that this duality comes because I do not think. I do not think. Uh, matter is the same. Oh, the color difference, you are little whiter than me. Why little? 100% whiter than me. Even then, we are made up of the same element because I do not think. So the duality remains. So the duality remains. And but when I do not think, then what happens? Because I see the duality in the world. Oh, this watch, I this watch is good. That is not good. Take one example. Do you like this T-shirt? Yes. Well, if you like this T-shirt, when there is a snowfall, put on this T-shirt and go out. You don't like it. Because you don't like it. That's why you cannot go out with the t-shirt in this when it is snow. Another duality has come. The mind creates the network of duality division. You are my husband, you are my wife, you are an employer, and I am an employee. I am male, you are female. 
mind has created a billions and billions of network of the duality. So, I'm just aware of the mind and looking at it, mind. Okay. Now see, because of this duality, non-thinking, likes and dislikes, now from dislikes and dislikes comes the desire. Our master says, transcend all the desires. You transcend all the desires, you are free. So in that reference of duality, the mind is saying, talking about the desire. So if we are not a seeker, then we will ask a question, okay, should I not eat? That is also a desire. Because you are not a seeker, you are crazy. That's why you are asking a wrong question. Now see, vasana. Vasana. Seed desire. It has yet to germinate. Sanskaras. Another word. Wish in English. Third word. Mind itself is the fourth word. Mind is the name of desire. Th that is why I just told you. I don't see you. So I have a desire to see you. That is really Shravanam. Oh my goodness. Mine indirectly created that wish to see you. It, it, it looks so normal. And this normal becomes abnormal. See that. Memory is another name of a desire. Will. Now I have a will. Will for what? To fulfill the desire. Imagination. Longing. We use the word sankalpa. They, they have a different meaning. But uh, let us take one word, sankalpa. So, you know, I understand, I get the knowledge, and then I become aware. The sankalpa means, you know, we have in Amrit Bindu Upanishad, manohi dividham proktam, shuddham cha, shuddham eva cha. Huh? Shuddham cha, shuddham eva cha. Sankalpam, something like this. Ashuddham kama sankalpam. The impure mind. Now see that. What? How we understand the impure mind means desire plus sankalpa. Sankalpa means I superimpose pleasure in that thought. Pleasure means happiness. So I'm. I have started looking happiness outside. Finished. Done. I fall back into duality. How can, how can you say that? Because I want a specific thing that gives me happiness. As compared to others. I want this beautiful women, not that. Done. Finished. So I have to live into that awareness. Yes. So listening should bring us to that level of awareness. You are talking casually, but internally you are aware. Mind, I will not allow you to take over me. Do whatever you want to do. I will play with you. You have been playing with me. Enough is enough. We have a big organization in US. Enough is enough. <laughs> so, enough is enough. My master says, you live consciously with awareness and attention the moment you wake up until you uh, sleep. Your meditation will happen automatically. So, vasana, 
Now you see that vasana is a very deep inside in the seed form. They manifest when there is a proper condition. Ah, with the people and objects and the things. Am I aware? Mind, where are you going? Are you creating a duality? Falling back into duality? No way. No way. No way. No way. There is another name of the desire. We say it is effort. I am the doer. The moment I make an effort, I am the doer. It is always because of the desire. And the desire is always because of the duality. I have to choose one as compared to the other. It, it means desire. We are going deeper. Only by understanding. So you see that? So this, this effort comes from the vasana, the seed. That seed has germinated. It is manifesting. Then we name another thing, another word, chitta. Memory bank. Bhavana, I have a good feeling for you. Why you have a good feeling for you, me? It is also a desire. When I have a good feeling for you, I have a bad feeling for others. So I have already divided. There is already a duality. There is already a duality. Can I understand this foul play of the mind, living in day to day in awareness? When you live into that awareness, my friend, then what happens? The mind now starts coming down. There is another word, spraha, Gita, Krishna uses the word spraha. The spraha means that now I'm obsessed with. I want to fulfill this desire at any cost. I am missing. I am missing this television. I am missing this phone. I am missing you, my, my honey. So there's, there's another. You see the different movement, feeling, thoughts in the mind. It all comes because of the duality. There is no other reason. And the duality is because I do not think. Even I do not say to the mind, come on. There is no division in this entire universe. We, I don't say even to the mind. I don't dare to say. I don't want to go further. because Why I don't dare to say? Because ego is working. Do you see? How Patanjali says, Avidya, Asmita, Raga, Dvesh, Abhinivesh, Pancha, Klesha, five causes of suffering. Huh? La ignorance, ego, attachment, detachment. And a strong inclination, identification with the mind, right? The five causes. Look at this duality, this division. Mind, why mind you see this division? I simply become aware. I see the wall, matter, body, matter. Finished. Finished. I don't go to further division. No, after all, the body is moving, the wall is not moving. How can you say that? Wall is constantly changing. Leave this wall for 100 years. It is constantly changing. I don't see it. Why I don't see it? Because I don't think it. By thinking, I get the knowledge. Huh? See that? Our masters have gone to the extreme to drop this delusion. What is that extreme? You might have studied, you might have read. You have a fascination for reading the books. So, master, ask a question. You have nine holes? 
in the body? Yes, you have nine holes in the body. Tell me which hole gives you the most useful, beautiful product. <laughs> you see that? I see how smart I am. Means my body is so smart. Which hole in the morning <laughs> gives you the most beautiful product? They have gone to the extreme. You don't want to become aware of it. That is the only problem. You don't want to remove the ignorance. I have to clean my eyes, I have to brush my teeth, I have to clean my nostrils, I have to clean <laughs> all the holes. I have to clean it, keep it clean, otherwise <laughs> body will go. <laughs> they have gone to the extreme. So when I studied many, many years ago and my master was teaching me, I said, what? Because Abhi Nivesh, Patanjali says Abhi Nivesh means that mind is totally sitting in the body, it doesn't want to go out. It says, I am the body, do whatever you want to do. So we start thinking, you know, what comes out of the mouth in the morning? Foul smell, what comes out of the ears and the eyes and the anus? Oh my goodness. Mind, do you love this body? <laughs> Come on. Do you love this body? So now see another uh, beautiful way to understand. Mind. That is why we say mind is the cause of the suffering and mind is the cause of the happiness. So... One master says beautifully, you are sitting calmly, do nothing, and watch the mind. The mind only thinks because of one thing. May I have this? That is why we have thoughts. May, may I have this also means, may I not have this? May I keep a distance from this, <coughs> and may I have this. So we moved from likes and dislikes to attachment and detachment. May I have this? You opened your computer at 9.15. I was late by one minute. So mine says, may I have this? <laughs> May I have this? See that? Now we are only listening and now we are settled into the knowledge. So mind should not be allowed to go in a wrong direction. It means I should not open my computer and do not meet you. Wrong approach. That is why we need Viveka. That is why we say we in the beginning we need Viveka. Do you see that? No, it means I should not eat. Come on, eat. But is the mind still craving for something that you are not eating? Wrong. Understand the duality. Understand the duality. Mind is putting you into the duality. Why? Because I'm not thinking. Because I'm not thinking. Because of likes and dislikes comes. <coughs> and the likes and dislikes causes the attachment and detachment. And that prompts me to action. And the action says that action will give me happiness. No action has ever given happiness to me. I should understand. I should start thinking. I'm simply requesting you, you start thinking the, the way the masters are thinking. And you will see the tremendous change in one day. You start thinking the way the masters are thinking. 
Master setting. May I have it, mind? I have understood you. Hold on. I don't want you to think in this way. May I have it? Let this be mine. That is imagination. How beautiful it is. I must appreciate in the society, but let me have it after I say how beautiful it is. My friend, I only need knowledge. Knowledge means awareness, knowledge and experience, nothing else. How beautiful it is. I have to become aware whether my mind superimposed the pleasure into that beautiful thing or it is simply saying it is beautiful. You need not to do any practice. Even if you do practice for 10 years, you will not understand this part. That is why the knowledge is required. Knowledge comes from the Shravanam. See, see the fact. I will do two hours of practice to know who are you. I will not get any. <laughs> do you see that? How nice if I could only possess it, if I only could touch it. Another name of the mind is known as, in English, longing, infatuation. Infatuation. So now I have understood the play, fancies, imagination, wish, vashna, liking and disliking. And I am thinking over it. So when I think, I find lot of words moves in only one direction, desire, liking. I have money, I have 20 t-shirts, so let me buy one more. It is so casual. And the same way, who cannot afford more, he also thinks in the same way. So both are in delusion. <laughs> huh? I want it, but I cannot have it. This is also a desire. I want it because I have the resources, so I will have it. You see how the mind plays the game with us? Now listen to the uh, advice of Krishna. Krishna says, become alert. The moment any object comes to your mind. That object may be a person, may be a cloth, may be a food, may be a, any object enters into the mind. You simply become aware of the very object the moment it enters into the mind because it will create a wish, liking, disliking, duality, conflict, have it, do not have it. And then we complain that the mind is wandering. So first step is, the moment it comes, the object. Second is, the mind starts thinking about that object. So very thinking is a wrong thinking. The master says, start with the right thinking. Master says, simply you start with the right thinking. What is right thinking? Supported by Viveka. So now see that Viveka, Vairagya, 
Sam dham uparati tiksha. They all are knowledge practice. I need not to sit down, breathe in and out, then Viveka will come. It will not come. It will not come. You do one hour of breathing practice to know my name, it will never happen. You see, you have to differentiate. You have to be very clear about it. Settle in that knowledge. The mind should be filed. I want to know the real self. Let me filter out. See that? How the masters have penetrated into the mind. Yes, in the beginning, I do the breathing, mind is purified. I can gain little focus, little more awareness because I'm relaxed. That is okay. Uh, the higher our masters, the great masters, I would say, including Buddha, Shankara, my master, enlightened masters, they say, yes, it is only good if you do not understand, if you cannot listen to the master, then do those breathing, do the kundalini, uh, do all the mantra and japa, do everything. Until your mind is clear, free from the doubt, ready to listen, and you reach to the shravanam. See that. And the most fascinating, another master speaks it, that the re where is the real self? Is it in your house? So anything lying in your house, you know it already. And you can easily know it. But the real self is the nearest to you. You need not to do any practice. You simply know it. You simply know it. What a beautiful way. So the master say, and remember all the time, the thought is a product of knowledge. Concept is a pro thought gives me the knowledge. So I have to think. Now see our Rama, you know about the story of Rama. So the master of Rama was Vasishta and uh, great masters, Vasishta and Bharadvaj, including Balmiki. So he says simple thing that you remember 24 by 7 happiness is inside. Forget the rest. <laughs> I like pasta, happiness is inside. Instantly the mind says, you think like. Happiness is inside. I like pasta, okay, I have the pasta, let me eat it. I don't have the pasta, whatever is there, let me eat it. In the beginning we need to do it. After that not required. Once the mind understands. So this master says, you know, I remember a beautiful thing. Uh, yoga Vasishtha is the oldest book of yoga, oldest. It contains 32 or 40,000 verses, means 80,000 lines. So the three masters were there, Balmiki, uh, who wrote this Adhyatmarama, and Bharadwaj, another great master, who also wrote Gayatri Mantra from the Vedas. And uh, Vasishtha. Vasishtha was also a great master. So Rama was frustrated. He went to the kingdom and he saw everything. And he said, people are engaged in the pleasure and they get the pain. And he started living lonely, alone. And then his father called uh, these masters because we were invited. We are still invited when you have a problem. <laughs> he was invited. So the Rama said that, you know, how to achieve, if you are talking about how to achieve that permanent peace and happiness, 
So the master guided him. He started listening. Listening, 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 and he was absorbed into meditation. Now the Bharadwaj master is asking the Valimiki how Rama could absorb into meditation just by listening. In Yoga Vasishta, there is no practice of asana, pranayama, breathing, mantra, etc. No. It's a pure knowledge. How come? No. He knows that he has achieved it. So he's asking, what is that one factor which led him to absorb into meditation? So Balmiki said he started thinking at the same time he was listening. That it is a fact. He was doing the contemplation. Mananam. He did the mananam. And he need not to be guided what practice needs to be done for meditation. He is eyes were closed. You were already absorbed. I found it. I'm taking you to the higher journey now. Uh, before that, no, if you do the, this practice, this will happen. We will continue to do that for the focus of the mind for the purification. But now this journey, what a great understanding. Understand this Shravanam. Shravanam. Imagination, attraction, or distraction causes destruction of our life. Imagination means I wish, I like, I should have it. So either I have attraction or distraction. Both leads to destruction. May I have it, may I wish, I simply am aware of it. This is what is explained in a different way in Ashtavakra Gita. But Ashtavakra Gita did not talk about these things. So that is why we are doing it. Yes, another master. You ask the mind, don't see the world for a few minutes. Do not see the world. Just do not see the world. That word includes your body, your breath, your mind, your thoughts, your business, <laughs> your whatever belongs to you. Don't see the world. Non-perception is known as yoga. Do you see that? Non-perception is known as yoga because non-perception leads to destruction of the mind. Because if the world is not there, then there is no desire, there is no inclination, there is no duality, there is no liking and disliking. So we have to live. Just think of it. I don't see the world. Okay. What will happen? Can I move the body? But I'm not the body. Body is a part of the world. I live into that awareness. Instant. We talk that the, this, this mind cannot be controlled. We need not to control the mind. We have to understand why the mind is not controlled. 
what is the root cause of it? You see, non-perception of the word. Simple. A is yoga. Who says? This master. Yoga was sister. You see the smile? Oh, non-perception, simply. We try, no, I like this guy, then I have a lot of thoughts about him, I am obsessed with him, I must have him. Come on, finish. Finished. Non-perception of the word is yoga, means destruction of the mind, means I am settled in yoga. Now let me perform my action. Let me play. Finish. See that? See that? You simply enter into that state of awareness. I have been repeating, let the time come when you start thinking the way the masters are thinking. What I'm thinking, the way the masters are thinking, peace and happiness are inside. Mind says, let me have a happiness by a cup of coffee. Mind, did I tell you? that happiness is inside, happiness is not in the coffee or the tea. You are thinking simply, with awareness, not habitual. So when you are thinking with this, mind realizes the coffee is impermanent, it is not permanent, it is constantly changing. Whatever is constantly changing cannot lead me to happiness. The effect is never permanent. Now see, now we are coming little deeper. Effect is not permanent. And because it is not permanent, the mind has made its habit not to think. Coffee boost triggers my brain. Now you see that coffee makes you crazy. Think daily. After a month, you will, <laughs> you will never drink coffee. It happens. You give me coffee, I will sleep easily. In my house, there are a lot of people, they say, no, no, if I take a drink, my ma, my, my honey, if I take a coffee, how can I sleep? That's why I don't, don't drink coffee. Nothing happens. That power of the real self is so great, so great. So you see the effect in the cause. I see the effect, let me find out the cause. That is what is explained in the seven layers of cause and effect relationship. I should break the habitual way of thinking of the mind. I have to enter into the ultimate cause. So when I break the habitual pattern, this Eastern wisdom generates the knowledge of the real self. This is what happens. It does not mean that the words that is written in the book is generating the knowledge. Again, we have to understand, be very clear. It is, I am studying myself. Study the Eastern wisdom to study myself. I'm studying myself and the knowledge is here and now. That is what Rama said. 
that is what you know the master of the rama said no oh, he was contemplating at the same time and that's why he got this knowledge he got this knowledge why i don't get this knowledge because of the doubt what so i have to remove the doubt by understanding doubt cannot be removed by breathing practice by pranayama but i need not to say to sasha and his group no no it will help you that is how we work the fact of the is that every master tells a lie in the beginning until you become a seeker why they tell the lie because that helps a little bit that prepares you no 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 do this breathing do kundalini meditation ah do this but don't fall back into the hallucination so you see we know it 100% that this kundalini this breathing this mantra ah they all help you to remove to help you focus the mind and remove the impurities finished but still you cannot reach there you have to un follow this path of knowledge you see that see that internally pick up every listen to it again and again pick up the point then sit down simply Listen. you open the television you are watching the news you forget your awareness that there is nothing on the tv screen but i get emotional i feel i have a liking and disliking we have created hundreds of machine like this hundreds of machine so when we become a seeker and then we go to the himalayas it will work and if we are not a seeker we go to the himalayas we will imagine television screen we will remember the past i saw that movie i heard that news that is why not everyone going to the himalayas becomes a yogi <laughs> You see that. So the doubt and the wrong notion must get out. Now understand, think of it that why this does not happen, because the mind has created trillions of impressions from the past. It creates millions of impressions every day. mind doesn't think oh this is my home good everything is clean means what if it is not clean i have to clean it it is doing it every, all the time we return to the old habits of fear anxiety insecurity then mind says no do something first outside have 1 billion dollar in your account that will give you a safety that gives you safety only to the body not to the mind I should be 100% clear. It cannot give a luxury bet to the mind. And if I die, I lost my ID because my fingers are scanned on this ID. Money is gone. Money remains, wealth remains, luxury remains until that there is a limitation until the body see there remember understand and you see mind mind for five minutes only i don't see the world 
So you no longer remain the body, the mind, the, the intellect, the ego, the thoughts and the feeling and the business and the honey and the kids. It includes everything. First, we have to get a knowledge that this body is also a part of the world. The mind is part of the world. The thoughts is a part of the world. Now I have understood. Really understood? Ah. Non-perception of the world. Where I am now, I need not to fight with any thought. Thought is a part of the world. Did we understand? That is why I covered thought is equal to I plus object. False I plus object. False I cre has created a duality. Do you see that? False I. Or the, you can say the mind. Mind plus object. It's the same thing. You see that this knowledge does not take place because The mind is not 100% available because it has millions of impressions, because it is habituated. It starts looking, it starts searching the real self, the way I earn money, the way I go for sexual pleasure. It will never happen. The mind has to be 100% available because it, they are outside. So my mind has to learn a new way totally. That is why we say focus. You should have a focus of the mind. You should have a purification. Look at it. So we only picked up the part of the duality, likes and dislikes. And once you pick up that, physical body has a sorrow and suffering. I don't see this part, that all the nine holes bring the filthy stuff every day in the morning. And still I say, my body, I want pleasure in the body. I want peace in the body. It will never happen. I want 100% health in the body, it will never happen. I'm not looking, thinking of the cause. Cause of the body, good and bad karma, dharma and adharma. So dharma and adharma, because of karma, I do karma. What I like, not good, it does not belong to nitya karma, still I do it. So that raga creates an impression, and the impression is the uh, creates the body. So that is why you see nitya and the nimitya karma. So physical body because of dharma and adharma, dharma and adharma because of uh, karma. Karma because of Raga and Dvesha. Raga and Dvesh because of liking and disliking, liking and disliking because of non-thinking. And I do not think and I see that the world is different from me. Because world is different from me, hence I have to like something, I have to dislike something. I cannot choose everything in the world. So what choosing comes? The choice comes because I do not think that they are essentially one. <laughs> and now go back to J. Krishnamurti who says choiceless awareness. Same thing. He says, no, don't practice. Reject the authority. Yes, reject. You reach there and then reject the authority, not before that. That is what he did, but he did not speak of it. He did not say that. And whenever he says, he says that I have studied everything, but it did not help me. No, it helped you. Then only you realize these problem of likes and dislikes. Then only you realize attachment and detachment. 
That is how you reach to a triceless awareness. So what happens because of this likes and dislikes, uh, this master says that this likes and dislikes, it, it is the intellect who chooses what I like and what I dislike. But why the intellect has this like and dislike? Because there, in the intellect, we have a superimposition that by liking this, this thing, I will be happy. By disliking this, I will be happy. If I divorce, I will be happy. If I marry, I will be happy. You know, you dislike and still you marry, not possible. See that? You dislike someone, no, no, I hate you, let us marry. Because then we say we are not thinking rightly. But we do not think the entire duality, this likes and dislike game is creation of the ignorance in the mind. And ignorance can only be removed by knowledge. There is no other way. I have to put the knowledge. Where the ignorance of the real self is, it is in the intellect. Where I have to remove the ignorance, it is same in the intellect. What breathing will do? What mantra will do? But don't take it in a different way. Still, we continue the journey until we reach there. We have to keep our level of the mind at a higher level of awareness, living into that state of calmness, focus, and purification. So you see that we do not think. So because we do not think, so we enter into avidya, what is known as duality. And duality is because of ignorance. Huh? Ignorance is nothing but it is unholy marriage. Unholy marriage between the real self and the false self. Shankara gives a beautiful example, red, hot, Iron ball. Huh? Yeah, I know that you have raised your eye. How can the iron ball be red hot? Because the fire is there. But the fire is not a permanent property of essential property of an iron ball. You remove it from the fire and it becomes black iron ball. So by the knowledge, by understanding, we remove that fire of consciousness from the body, mind, thoughts, intellect, and ego. What is left is the pure consciousness. What is left is the pure consciousness. I must start thinking the way the masters are thinking. What's the big deal? Let us do it, let us fix. So when we start thinking the way the masters are thinking in our daily life, we are ready to receive that knowledge. We need only knowledge to remove the ignorance about the real self. I am ignorant about physics. So how to get the knowledge of the physics? By studying the physics. Not studying the chemistry. So I want to know about the real self. I have to study about the real self. Because it is not available in the world, because the mind has been constantly subjected to by the not self. Hence, we have the Eastern wisdom. We have to follow these principles. Even the very process, the way of the thinking. How my these nine holes throws out the worst 
thing that I don't want to see. I don't want to have it. But because of non-thinking, I'm still attached to the body. After all, this body has nine holes. Body has nine holes. See that. See the very strong masses by our masters. knowledge. One more point that that real self is self-existent. Master says self-luminous, all-pervading. It is like the sun, not the moon who borrows the light from the sun. Does the sense organ borrows the light of the consciousness to see the world outside? Yes. Mind borrows the consciousness? Yes. Body becomes conscious because it borrows the consciousness? Yes. How can I be the body, the senses, breath and the mind? Here and now. Here and now. The moment you think in this way, you will find the mind drops into calmness. Why? Because the mind dissociates itself from those impressions which are present in the body. Here and now. The very dissociation. You sold your house today in one million dollars. Do you st again start thinking about the house? No, I have already sold. It's not mine. Dissociation. This is what the dissociation is. Outside, it's a purely a physical registry, money exchange, but what we are doing, we are doing it inside. We cannot torture mind, we cannot throw the mind away. Mind is an instrument of knowledge. So we have to put the knowledge here, simple. That is free from doubt, that is free from any error, that is free from wrong notion, we are already there. 